our specular works within the Pixar surface. And I'm also going to show you the two modes that run within it. Now, the first thing to point out with the Pixar surface is it comes with three lobes of specular. So the first lobe is this rough specular here. And then the next one you have is this primary specular. And then you also have a clear coat as well. So one of the amazing things about having three layers of specular is it's very versatile and it allows you for many creative uses. And one of these such uses is to create beautiful car paints. And we're going to get into that in a future lesson. Now, the next thing to understand is that all three of these spec lobes, they work in the same way. You have this artistic mode and you have this physical mode. And in this current lesson, I'm just going to show you how the artistic mode works. And then in the next lesson, I'll show you how physical mode works. Okay, so if you haven't watched the conductive versus dielectric lesson, I suggest you just jump back to that one um, before you continue with this one because it'll give you a few foundations about how the specular works in conjunction with the diffuse. And just for this example, I'm just going to close these down and we're just going to concentrate on this primary specular. Now, I'm just going to start by making a metal. So, and as I mentioned in the conductive and dielectric lesson, we need to remove the gain if we want to get a perfect metal. So the first thing to do with a metal is to increase the edge color. And this normally goes up to one. And you can see here that now what we start to get is reflection on the grazing angles of our teapot. And this is controlled by the Fresnel exponent and we're gonna to get to this in a minute. So the next thing we wanna to do to create a metal is begin to increase this face color. And now you can see what we've started to get is this lovely chrome teapot. Now, in artistic mode, if you want to change the color of your metal, you do this by changing the face color. So if I just go ahead here and I create a nice dark red teapot. So like I say, this face color controls the color of your metal. So the good rule of thumb is always leave the edge color to white and then whatever color you want your metal to be, use this face color to control it. Now with the Fresnel exponent, what this is, is it's effectively a mixer between your edge colour and your face colour. So if I take this all the way down to zero, for instance, you'll see now that what happens is that we get completely rid of all our face colour. And then if I go all the way up to 10, we've now got rid of our edge colour. So what this is doing is it's controlling your Fresnel fall off. So the default is 5. And the nice thing about running in this artistic mode is you can actually break physically correct values and start to create sort of shaders that may not be physically correct, but just look cool. So the next thing I want to show you is roughness. And I've just gone ahead here and I've loaded in a texture map. And I've got this from surfaceimperfections.com. And they've kindly allowed us to use their grunge and dirt maps within our learning foundations course. So if you're looking for a set of really amazing texture maps, I suggest you go to surfaceimperfections.com and have a look at this pack. So the map that I'm using from Surface Imperfections is this cast iron. And I've plugged it into the Pixar round cube. And then from the multi-texture, I've then gone into a Pixar remap so I can color correct it. And before I plug it in, I'm just going to reset this back to default. And you can do this by left clicking on any render man parameter. I'm just going to bring this back up again. And then I'm just going to take the Fresnel exponent back to five. So we're kind of back to where we started. So to plug this in, I simply just take out the red output from our map. And then I plug this into the specular roughness. Now I've gone ahead here and I've exaggerated the result because I want you to be able to clearly see what this map is doing. And if I solo the Pixar remap, you can clearly see here that where white is on our map, this is where the roughness is. And the darker it gets down to black, this is how smooth it is. Just keep that in mind when you're importing maps from things like Megascans and Polygon it is that white is rough and black is smooth. Now what I can do here is I can go ahead and I can start to adjust my map however I like. And one thing that I would suggest is that whenever you're trying to refine the levels of a black and white map is to always use this Pixar remap node. It's a very versatile node and it's perfect for adjusting all your dirt maps and other black and white maps that you may have plugged in as well. Okay, so that was roughness. And before we move on, I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect the map. And diving inside of the advanced tab here, you can see that we have a number of extra options. 
First one is specular model. And what this does is it defines what specular model this specular lobe is using. And at the minute, we're using Beckman, which is the default. And this is really good for sort of speculars that you want to have a sharp reflection. So things like mirrors, for instance, are quite good in this mode. But for the majority of materials that you want to be making, this new GGX mode is really the one that you want. And you can see that what happens to the tail and the fall off is it gets much, much softer. And this is now a sort of preferred specular mode that most people are using these days. So next up here is anisotropy. And what this does is it basically, it controls the shape of your highlights and reflections. And to demonstrate this, let me show you what happens is that if I turn this down to minus one and you let this refine for a minute, what you can see is that our highlights are being stretched from left to right. And then if I go ahead here and increase this back up to one, you can see now that our highlights are going from top to bottom. So they're going up and down or they're going left or right. And you can control this direction by plugging maps into this shading tangent, which I'm going to show you in the next example. So if I just go ahead here and I move over to this anisotropy tab that I've prepared, I've got this interesting looking shading network here called smudges. And I'm just going to go ahead here and apply it to our teapot. OK, so let me explain to you what's going on. I've got a simple edge and face color, exactly how we had before. The Fresnel exponent is the default. Now, I'm using this fingers smudge map here, which again, I've got from Surface Imperfections. And I'm using the triplanar. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm giving it a quick color correct using the Pixar remap. And then I'm plugging that into the specular roughness. So effectively, in basic terms, what I've got is I've got a fingerprint that's leaving smudges on our metal teapot. So what I've done to add an extra dimension to our shader is I've taken the output of our fingerprint map and I've adjusted it a little bit more using a different Pixar remap. And then I've plugged it into this node called a Pixar tangent field, which effectively what this is doing is it's converting the black and white values and defining the directions that you want the anisotropy to be going. So what a lot of 3D artists do these days is they just plug in their smudge maps into their roughness and then they kind of leave it at that. But a more advanced and creatively interesting way to use these fingerprints and smudge maps is to actually control the direction of your anisotropy with this map here by plugging it into the shading tangent. And to give it a little extra boost, I've also added some rotation offset as well.